Hi guys, my name is Abby. I am a second year UCL law student. I also did a year of the LLB program at CUHK before withdrawing my studies, taking a gap year to reapply to unis, and now I'm at UCL. Basically, I've noticed that a lot of my UCL classmates are also transferees from other Hong Kong universities. A lot of my juniors from CUHK have also approached me to ask whether I would advise transferring out of CUHK. Because I finished my first year at UCL now, and I also finished my first year at CUHK, I feel like I'm in a pretty fair position to like compare the two and sort of give my thoughts about pursuing a LLB degree in two different jurisdictions because I know that, albeit it's a very niche problem, it's still a consideration that maybe a lot of Hong Kong uni students may consider. So I'm hoping that I can just sit down and talk about it. Also, I'm trying to milk my CUHK clout as much as I can. Um, this will probably be the last CUHK related video that I will ever make before, you know, officially wrapping up this era of my life and moving on to making UCL content from here on out. I have a lot of thoughts and opinions about this topic. Like I went on a whole thought vomit the other day and like wrote almost 4,000 words on this. Why? Because I'm crazy. So apologies in advance for what is going to be a very long and rambly video, but I have thoughts, I have opinions, and you're gonna hear them. Get a cup of tea, get a cup of coffee, let's begin. Also, before we start this video, just a couple of disclaimers. Whatever I say is purely coming from my own experiences, and I have no intention whatsoever to negate anyone else's experiences. Hi, editing Abby here. Um, I realized that I don't make this point as eloquently, so I'm gonna refilm this on photo booth because I'm lazy. Basically, the point that I was trying to make is that every person's experiences in uni is vastly different because whether or not a person is suited for a certain school is very much up to their personality and their needs and wants for higher education. Of course, each school has its good and bad. And like as a new student, going into a new school, you will face the similar challenges everywhere. Once you get through those hurdles of like making friends, finding societies that suit you, like you're gonna have a good time regardless. Um, like the fact that I enjoy studying at UCL now doesn't negate the fact that I had actually had a really good time at CUHK. In hindsight, that year I had in CUHK set a really, really good foundation for me to be able to thrive at UCL. I know I outline a lot of the shortcomings that CUHK may have in terms of difficulties of finding friends and finding societies, as well as like low tutorial participation rates, but this isn't to say that finding a group of friends or finding the right societies is completely impossible because I managed to find a group of really good friends. I I managed to find societies that I was really invested in and like tutorials do get better once you get into second and third year. To be abundantly clear, I'm not trying to say that CUHK is a bad school in any regard. It's still a really, really good school. Once you push past these initial hurdles of like friends, societies, tutorials, you'll still be able to have a really good time. I've also never been on the UCL campus because of COVID. I mean, in general, I still feel like I can make a pretty fair comparison, but you know, just keep that in mind. While I was applying to unis, I never planned on being back in Hong Kong. It was always either Hong Kong U or it was going to be the UK. I distinctly remember that I applied to CUHK on a whim because I was freaking out that no one would accept me, which ended up being kind of true because I fucked up my LNAT. I got rejected from everywhere. I did get an offer from Hong Kong U, but the conditional that they gave me was fucking impossible. My choices were basically CUHK, Nottingham, or Leeds. I wasn't super excited about either of these options to be very honest. I still chose to go back to Hong Kong, um, CUHK, because if I was planning on staying in Asia long term after graduation, it just seemed like Hong Kong was the more objectively reasonable choice to go with. Overall, my first year at CUHK was quite mellow. Like, I wasn't actively unhappy, but I think because CUHK was originally just like at the very, very bottom of my uni list, that I always subconsciously had this feeling that I could do better than this. It ended up manifesting in this like sort of resentment for where I was. I also found it quite difficult to fit into the school culture. The fact that I identify as a Hong Konger, but I also don't, it just created this like very weird identity crisis that I didn't really know where to place myself. I just lacked the sense of belonging to a certain community. So I actually considered transferring out during summer of my first year, but that was also the summer that the Hong Kong protests had started to gain traction. It was a messy summer. Basically, I had gone back to second year at CUHK just for like a few weeks until my parents sort of urged me to suspend my studies first, take a gap year, try and reapply to UK universities. Happily, luckily, thankfully, I got into UCL this time around. So I'm here now talking to you. 
a three-year degree doesn't move faster in terms of academics it moves a lot faster in terms of you needing to figure out what you want to do in the future start applying for jobs and like first year schemes and training contracts there like you hit the ground running i think in hong kong because it's four years you have a lot more time to figure out what you want to do and you can sort of use first year to really settle in and the work doesn't really start until like your third year I feel like the curriculum in Hong Kong is a lot more flexible and it can be a good or bad thing because you do have general education requirements but you also get the space to sort of tailor um, your university experience to include subjects that are non-law related. So CUHK requires everyone to take general education courses which include UGFN, UGFH, IT, PE, Chinese, and um, your college GE classes. These general education requirements can be so annoying because they are literally the most boring, driest subject that you could ever learn but they still count for your GPA. Besides from these GE courses, you also get the space to learn other subjects and potentially even minor in another subject. So in my first term at CUHK, I took a communications class. Before I left, I was actually planning on minoring in communications. My friend Sherry, she took clinical science classes and my other friend, I think, took like English literature courses. In the UK, like the curriculum is fixed. I kind of hate the fact that I don't get to choose my courses until third year. Even then, like I can only choose from a batch of law related courses. CUHK is very good at teaching you the practicalities of the law. Lectures do kind of spoon feed students a little bit more in terms of like what the case law is, how case law developed. Tutorials also just echo this like very spoon feedy format, but UCL is a lot more theory based. In your lectures, you take a lot more time to learn how different academics view the law and like what sort of arguments have come up about a certain legal principle. Even though there is more workload required, I do like the more theory based approach. I think it has made studying law a lot more interesting to me because you also get the chance to form your own opinions about what the law should and should not be. CHK has final exams at the end of both semesters, um, but UCL only has final exams at the end of the year. Even though it sounds like, oh, there's only one final exam season at UCL, the workload is actually heavier because UCL also implements formative assessments as well as summative assessments. Every formative season is basically just another exam season that you need to stress out about. So at UCL, the formatives include a term one formative, a term two formative, both of which are due in the middle of the term right after re reading week, as well as a mid-sessional, which is due right after Christmas. While like these are ultimately formative assessments, I feel like people in general do take formatives quite seriously because you get feedback and marks It really really helps with preparing for exams as well And it comes to the cost of me not being able to enjoy reading weeks or Christmas even I do feel like it's a little bit more conducive to learning CUHK on the other hand does not have formative You basically just get to chill, vibe, work on your tutorials every week. But the bad thing about not having formatives is that you don't get any frequent feedback on your work. That makes it really, really hard to improve, especially when you don't know whether you have a good grasp on the material. Some of my professors at CUHK did offer practice exams, and because it was just like a one-off event, I wasn't able to gauge how they marked me. So I still went into my first exam, like really, really blind as to what they were looking for, what a good exam looks like, and how I should even write a problem question or write an essay. No offense to anyone at CUHK, but people don't do jack shit for tutorials there. We are going to pretend we didn't hear that. I don't know about y'all, but this comes from personal experience. Like, whenever I went into tutorials, it would be so awkward because no one would want to participate. It just seemed like no one really took tutorial work seriously. I even had one tutor, like, storm out of the room because no one was really prepared. To be fair, English is not the average CUHK student's first language, and I get that participation might be difficult, to demand from a new student and I have heard from my friend that participation does get better but like the fact that a lot of people don't take tutorials seriously is like kind of bizarre to me because a lot of the tutorial questions you can kind of copy and paste from the lecture slides this isn't to say that everyone at UCL like 100% participates or prepares extensively for tutorials I myself am guilty of showing up to tutorials not knowing a damn thing about what is being said the lack of preparation that I know of from my peers mostly comes from the fact that we are too busy with other extracurricular shit or applications so we kind of put tutorials on the back burner but like generally I also think that tutorial questions at UCL are a lot harder to prep for there is just so much more required. The UHK tutors tend to stick to the question sheet, but some tutors at UCL go off the page so frequently, they hit you with surprise questions that you just don't know the answer to. I do feel that tutorial participation rates at UCL are higher, and people do take tutorials a bit more seriously. The workload of the tutorials at 
UCL and CUHK can actually be exemplified by the tutorial schedule itself. So in CUHK, you would have a tutorial for every lecture every week, but at UCL, you would have bi-weekly tutorials. Numerically, seems less, but it's also the fact that two weeks is given to you because you just have so much to read. And the fact that you're given two weeks to prep often also sets up higher expectations from the tutors during the session. The faculty at UCL is huge, and I mean huge. At CUHK, there will only be one lecture per subject. Quite often, the lecturer would also take on most of the tutorial groups. There will also be like a barrister who comes in and does like two, a couple other tutorial groups, but mostly it would just be restricted to that one lecturer who is the main like guy of the subject. But at UCL, every module has multiple lecturers, and each lecturer would also take on multiple tutorial groups, but there would also be like at least three to five other faculty members who are also taking on tutorial groups. Like, of course, UCL is probably a lot richer, a lot more well-funded, and attracts a lot more like researchers, but I feel like the small size of CUHK's faculty also limits their options of who they can ask to be tutors for certain subjects. I remember my tutor for PRC legal system was actually a researcher for environmental law. It was kind of clear in tutorials that he just really had no interest in the subject. But on the other hand, every tutor or lecturer at UCL is so passionate about their subject that they're teaching. The demographics of professors are also quite different. Most of my professors at CUHK were on the older side and were white. And I also took the liberty to scroll through CUHK's faculty page and it actually only lists like nine female professors in total. Like it's just really interesting to me because the gender balance of the faculty is something that I never really noticed until I had like consecutive classes with different female professors and I was like, whoa, I never had this experience at, at CUHK. Admittedly, still mostly white, but I do think that the faculty really does take diversity and inclusion seriously. Teaching quality is also a bit difficult to compare because good professors and bad professors exist regardless of which institution you're in. Simply by virtue of the fact that professors are at academic institutions to mainly do research and teaching is like the <laughs> side requirement that they have to fulfill. I've had good and bad professors at both CHK and UCL. The professors at UCL do have a bit more academic clout, but one of my favorite professors is still my constitutional law professor from first year at CHK, who was really nice, super cool, relatively young as well. So he just made co learning constitutional law really, really enjoyable. I'm gonna go faster because my camera is running out of battery. God, this video is a mess. I just find that UCL offers a lot more opportunities on this front. There are always competitions organized by the Law Society, um, debate competitions, mooting competitions, negotiation competitions, client interviewing competitions. And you would also have external associations such as ELSA, ALSA, Junior Lawyers Against Poverty, Lawyers Without Borders, and external mooting competitions like Jessup and Bismut. Students at UCL are also open to a lot more pro bono opportunities because UCL has its own legal clinic and the fact that I could do pro bono was very exciting to me. CUHK, unfortunately, doesn't have a lot of these similar opportunities. The extent of which you can get involved in law-related extracurriculars would be their Undergraduate Law Society Committee, or ULS, and Mooting, as well as Asia Law Students Association. But I will say this, CUHK's Mooting program is very, very strong. I think they were finalists this year at GESO, which is actually a huge achievement. But I don't think Mooting is necessarily like accessible to every person because you do have to try out to get on the mooting team, I think. I did one moot in my first year and I definitely don't think I had enough support from the mooting society or ULS to prep. This is also a good time to segue into talking about Law Society and how they are vastly different at CHK and UCL. I'm not trying to like throw shade, I just think that the way these two systems differ is just so amusing to me. Please don't sue me for defamation. No ma'am. No ma'am. The committee of ULS at CUHK are all consisted of first year students, meaning that you choose the committee that is going to organize all your events and advocate your interests literally like three months into the first semester. These like fresh faced freshies suddenly have to shoulder this like mammoth burden. In truth, from what I've seen, being on committee for ULS is a very over glorified role. And I oh! It's really just menial labor work. In Hong Kong, being on committee is colloquially known as Seung Zhong. The committee of the previous year is called Seung Zhong, and then the next committee is called their Ha Zhongs. And like, there is this very weird hierarchy of your Seung Zhongs and your Ha Zhongs, which is so toxic to me. Call the police. We need to call the police. Like, I've witnessed that toxicity up close, firsthand. Honestly, Zhong, Zhong, do it.
On the other hand, I feel like the way Law Sock um, at UCL works makes a lot more sense because the committee is made up of second and third years with only one first year rep. The committee is also a lot larger and each person has a very distinctive role. Their work is a lot more integral to the degree itself. It may just also be menial labor work, but I have yet to hear them complain about that. If you're not able to speak Cantonese to a native level, that immediately closes off a lot of clubs and societies at CUHK that you can participate in. There would be the English debate team, which by the way, join. They're very lovely people. I love them. They do so well in the Asian debate circuit and you will have a really, really wonderful time. Um, and International Students Association. Like this isn't a fair comparison because like Hong Kong is a primarily Cantonese speaking city and London is an English speaking city, but like UCL just has a lot more opportunities of clubs and societies that are also very, very niche that you wouldn't be able to find anywhere else. So right now I'm still involved in debate, also took British Sign Language classes, and I'm also in the Law Faculty Feminist Book Club. So like, I feel like I was just generally able to find societies that fit my interests a little more at UCL. Surprisingly, even though I was online, I was able to make friends at UCL a lot easier. The student body of UCL is really, really diverse. A lot of my peers are also people of similar backgrounds. So people who are also third culture kids or come from international schools. Like even if they're not from Asia, they still have that like experience of being from X country, growing up in Y country, but their passport is Z country. And that sort of environment is just so familiar to me. There are also just so many Asians at UCL laws that, you know, you I felt right at home. I did have friends at CUHK, like I did find friends at CUHK, a lot of whom I still keep in contact with. I feel like the general consensus of international kids or international school kids is that the pool is a lot smaller. It's also kind of hard to make friends with locals if your canto is not good. The issue of the language barrier at CUHK is kind of interesting because the Jupus kids always thought that the non jupas kids who spoke English all the time instead of canto were super elitist and exclusive, which is true to a certain extent. The non jupas kids were also scared to approach the local kids because of like language barriers. So I feel like the system of having non jupas and jupas would just create two camps of people who can't really integrate well enough. Oh my god, people at UCL are so hardworking, so ambitious, and they're so accomplished. It literally scares me. Not only are they smart and good at studying, they also have like outside hobbies that they're also good enough to commercialize. Like I know people who are professional athletes, actors, artists. If not that, people have literally given up medical degrees to study law. I've never felt more of a small fish in my entire life until I got to UCL. It is humbling and it has also taken my ego down like quite a few notches. But I will say this though, people at CUHK are just nicer. Like they're a lot chiller. Everyone is also really, really hardworking and equally as ambitious. I think because people at UCL, especially if they're a law student, they're already so smart. They often feel entitled to act like an asshole to other people. I am so powerful. My mind, oh, it amazes me sometimes. Overall, they are very friendly people, but you also have a higher chance of running into people who are a bit more condescending. I've been told that if you plan on staying in Hong Kong, you should just stay in Hong Kong to study your LLB. To an extent, it is true because you wouldn't have to take conversion exams for PCLL and the threshold for being accepted into PCLL is a lot lower, but getting a UK LLB from a very highly regarded university definitely does not shut you out for employability opportunities in Hong Kong. If anything, I feel like it gives an extra option of being able to practice in the UK as well. Like I know unemployment and like competition is super high, but I definitely don't think one jurisdiction shuts you out from another jurisdiction. Oh my god, we're finally done. My voice is also hoarse now. I'm so sorry for being super rambly. Thank you so much for sitting through this video. I hope you have a really good day and I will see you for my next video. Bye!